We are living for the one. We are living for the one. We are living for the one, the one to Lord. We are living for the one. We are living. Cassio, the Episcopal experience of Cassio, uh, has is now 50 years or more old, but we inherited from the Catholic Cassio movement, which of course began in Spain shortly after the Second World War, uh, and we, like them, have the, used the principle of oh, start of all over. Go back and start over. Cursio. Essentially, Cursio is a little course in Christianity. But it has grown exponentially amongst parishes in the Episcopal Church, but especially in the Catholic Church, the Presbyterian Churches, and other denominations. It is a very broad movement. But we're responsible in the Episcopal Church for our own um, oversight and our own development of, of this movement. It's not an organization really, it's, it's a movement. And therein lies an issue or problem. The Casillo weekend, which begins the Casillo experience for people, is essentially a three-day weekend in which two events happen. One is the experience of Christian community as a joyful, warm, embracing demonstration of what Christian life together could be. Now, it's a very concentrated experience when you've got 50, 60 people all together for three days, it's, it's easier to create that kind of experience than it is um, out in the real world. But at least it gives people a sense of what human community can be like. The second is introducing people or reminding people of the doctrines and teachings of the faith the Christian faith. These are 15 talks of basic doctrine and theology common to all our denominations. And they're meant to instruct and create a base for understanding what we believe. Now, in addition to all of that, that has grown up around this experience of the weekend. Traditions that operate in every little locality, every diocese, every, every place. There's, and there has been an accretion of all kinds of other items. The music. There's Curcio music. But, but there is no such thing as Curcio music, except it's, there's a genre of music now that is often used at Curcio. You see, as we have grown, so issues have evolved and developed that we now have to face. There have been criticisms. We've been accused of brainwashing people. We've been accused of, of manipulating and, and pressuring people. Well, this we may not, cannot do. Um, We've been accused of being divisive. We've been accused of being exclusive, of being a secret community. We really need to answer this kind of criticism openly and face some of these questions that have been raised. We are now, let us say, 50 years old. We are maturing. We've grown exponentially, as I said. 
And now we have to, as a mature um, movement, we have to be responsible for our further growth and be very um, cognizant that we, we do offer for the whole church a tremendous opportunity for en enlivening and enriching local congregations, diocesan congregations, and so on. And so we, we have a great responsibility because we have a great opportunity. And as such, we must be open. We must make ourselves available to people. That is the challenge. So I have a number of videos, and you can look at these videos and, and choose and see um, the questions that I think we really need to be asking ourselves at this stage. We are living for the one. We are living for the one, the one true Lord. We are living for the one, we are living for the one, we are living for the one, the one true Lord. We are